Well, another Bible study in the Family Worship Center with Pastor Dan Hatton. Good to be with you today, and I hope your life is doing well. I hope you're maintaining during these strange times like we've never seen before. Hey, I want to I want to talk to you about our city, uh, about where we live, about a love for this city. I'm hearing different opinions about our city and about this and that and the other thing. Uh, just as a church is not a building, so the land is not the city. The city is the people. We're praying for our city. Uh, when I came here in 2001, I drove these streets. One thing that came to me as I looked at it, everything was new to me, and it was the people. The streets were full of people. And God just spoke to me about Portland. And he pointed at the people. Not the trees, not the surrounding, the people. We're in days that were a little apprehensive, days that's a little unsettling, days where we need our faith peaked. I want to talk to you about Jonah this morning. Uh, Jonah was a man that was asked to go do something for God. And he ran. Jonah was asked to go to this great city, the Bible says. In the, just in the first few words of his book, it says, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it for its wickedness. It had the potential to be great. And it's interesting, that city repented at the preaching of Jonah. But Jonah didn't go to Nineveh right off. He ran from God because he won. He was not interested to be in tune with God's program. Two, Jonah hated the people that God had called him to. Jonah argued with God's reasoning. Jonah thought his ways were best. Jonah used anger, stubbornness, self-pity to rule his decisions. We find in this book we see a lot of Jonah. We hear about his anger. We see his self-pity. We watch his stubbornness. No, he went the other way. He ran from God, and he found himself in trouble. You see, when our opinions and attitudes don't reflect what we've committed to God, we find ourselves making decisions that are outside of what God wants us to do. We lose our spiritual perspective. We don't tend to lay our lives down for others anymore. We stop looking for God's will in our lives and last we lose our first love. Well, we think we still love people, but there was a love back there that was so much better. Jonah had a rude awakening. Jonah entered a great storm and he told the men on that boat, just throw me overboard and the storm will go away. In my opinion, Job was committing spiritual suicide along with physical suicide. He thought, I'll just die, that'll fix it all. But he had no idea. It wasn't too long till Job described it this way. The sea and the earth has closed in on me forever. That experience in the belly of that great fish had to be suffocating, had to be painful. You know it was pitch black. And he felt that was the end of his life. But in that time, in that three days, Jonah changed his tune. Jonah said this. This was the perspective he came to. He hadn't had it before. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. He realized he didn't work for himself. He worked for God. We do what he tells us to do. Friends, we're at a time our city needs us, needs us bad. I've encouraged each of us to pray three times a day for the city. I encourage us to drive those streets down there until we get a burden for what's going on here. I encouraged all of us to find a high place where we could overlook this city and pray for it and fast and pray. You work for God. This city needs you. Oh, I have an emphasis on the city of Portland. 
I think we've come to a time of a great opportunity, not a time of great unsettling things, but a great opportunity to be spiritual, to cry out to God. He said it's the keys to the kingdom. I'm giving you the keys to bind in the loose. I preached about that, and I'll preach more about that in the future. But let me say this. Jonah woke up in the belly of that whale. He said this, I will sacrifice for you a voice of thanksgiving. From now on, I'm going to be a thankful man. Two, I will pay what I have vowed. My commitments and my vow, I'm going to renew my payments to that. Rededicate myself. I'm going to double up. And last of all, I will say salvation is from God. There's no other thinking in my head. The Bible said that that fish vomited him up on the beach. And he went and preached in Nineveh. And they repented. There's often a temptation then to go back. But in the book of Jude, it's 120, it says... But ye, beloved, build up yourselves on your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's be praying. Let's be crying out. Let's reach our city for Christ. I'm going to pray for you. Dear Lord, cover these today. Cover these today. Cover these today. Encourage them in the Lord. To eliminate the struggle of uncertainty is to eliminate the need for faith. It takes this struggle and this pulling and this pushing. It keeps us in a place where we're strong. Help us, Lord, in this time to be strong. In our faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thanks for listening today. You're listening to Dan Hatton at Family Worship Center. We're going to see you on Sunday, 1030, Drive Up Church. Hey, it's going to be fun. 1030, this Sunday, Drive Up Church. Bye-bye now.